Hello and welcome to our Art Splash podcast, where we have open and playful and also meaningful and thought-provoking conversations about art, creativity, life and spirituality. I'm Joy Fay, And I'm Eve Marie Woodson-Jones. So welcome to our podcast and uh, great that you're here. And today we've got a really... Um, challenging (laughs) Uh, (laughs) a challenging subject is what's our greatest challenge and um i think that will incorporate an awful lot of things um what do you think Eve? yes where do we start (laughs) life is a challenge (laughs) yeah absolutely i was just going to say maybe we need to look at what actually is a challenge how do we define what a challenge is and um, maybe, you know, your your interpretation might be a little bit different from mine and from every, you know, everybody else has a certain way of thinking of challenges. But yeah. um, well, why don't you start? Tell me what you think is a challenge. Overall. Um, I think it's for me, I feel that if I'm if I set myself a goal and um, I really want to to achieve it then the challenge is achieving it because Mm. I can get started and then I get distracted or diverted or feel that it's too difficult. Um, All those kind of blocks could come up to take me away from doing what I'd set out to do. So I guess for me, I think the challenge is the, 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 setting the idea or the the project better better said and fulfilling it mm. but i feel that that applies to everything every day you know from the moment you get up in the morning to the moment you close your eyes and go to sleep <laughs> that you know to set ourselves a theme for the day or to set ourselves in the mi- in the right mindset um to deal with everything that's going on and and i think it's very emotional at the same time so it's Mm. so broad that if i brought it down to just painting or setting myself an actual project um actually setting it planning it organizing it and doing it (laughs) yeah yeah and every aspect of that tends to be a challenge (laughs) <laughs> yeah well I think sometimes it's perhaps because we don't um, think and plan ahead and anticipate what could confront me as I'm trying to achieve you know this goal this objective and complete the project yeah. um, and I think if we did that you know if we sort of sat down and thought okay well I'm gonna you know I know how to start it or I, I you know have an idea how to start it but then I might get stuck at this point so how would I deal with that? And then you mentally go through the exercise of uh, figuring out, okay, I can, you know, if I come across that issue, I know how to deal with it. And then maybe there's another issue. And so you're constantly perhaps um, setting yourself up to be able to deal with whatever comes in your way in advance, as opposed to it sort of, you know, hitting you in the face and you're, then you're stuck and you don't know where to go and you don't know what to do. I mean, it sounds like an ideal way of, of doing everything, but I know it's not always possible. But I think mm. it helps if you know that you want to do something and you can almost plan it out and think of all the different possible, you know, roadblocks or, or stumbling blocks or whatever that might mm. come in the way. And then your mind, your imagination can come up with solutions to those. So yeah, you're absolutely. ready for it. Yeah. I, I think the, the, the important thing about it, certainly for me, is um, being clear about what I want to achieve. So um, if I say, for example, one of my biggest challenges um, was to actually uh, do my online courses. That was the biggest challenge, starting that, Mm -hmm. because I thought about it and procrastinated about it for years. So eventually, I was kind of forced into a corner <laughs> when um, when the lockdown happened and I thought well that's an ideal opportunity to actually put my money where my mouth is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um and 
I, I haven't been good at planning, but it forced me to plan it because I had to plan the course out. So um, that was a fantastic exercise in itself. Yeah. Was to the, the end goal was to do the course and to, you know, to, have to put together a really great, interesting course about how to paint abstracts. You know, the abstract made simple was the first course that I did. And I wanted to, 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 to really kind of give it everything I had. <laughs> so the planning of it was um, really important. So I could then break it down. Yeah. So each that section then great. had its own plan. So I had the overall plan and then I had each section had a plan. And if I could adapt that strategy to everything else that I did, <laughs> I'd probably be a lot happier <laughs> um, because it worked eventually. It took me, I think, about six weeks in total. It was, you know, quite a long haul to put it all yeah. together. And then I had to understand how to edit it and how to, you know, all the filming, the lighting, the sound, the blah, blah, um, other than the painting. Um, so I feel that, it, you know, the challenges that I have now, I have to sort of take a bit of a step back and be clear about what it is that the challenge is. Mm. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yes, because exactly. it can get so confusing, you can get overwhelmed with so many different ideas and stuff. So, you know, we're doing the retreat in a couple of weeks and I'm really now planning everything down to the last pencil. <laughs> <laughs> and actually with writing all that out and then structuring the programme, what we're going to do each day, and what we what 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 we're going to do you know in each section of each day yeah. has really helped me clear my mind to how we're going to do it because if I just thought right well, I'm doing the retreat and people are coming and we're going to paint yeah uh, well, no detail it's no, overwhelming wouldn't. so I found that actually you know writing it all out literally handwriting it not even typing it yeah. You know, day one, we're going to do this, and if we're going to do this, I need this. Right. And to get that, I have to do this. <laughs> so the challenge becomes then easier yes. because you, you do it in bite sizes rather than the challenge being the whole elephant. Yeah, yes. exactly. That's how you eat an elephant. Yeah, one, one bite yeah. at a time. One, but how do you bite. factor in unexpected things? You know, this is part of, I think, life is that, and, you know, as much as you can plan, and I think it's a wonderful mm -hmm. uh, way of doing it, but all of a sudden something might happen that you had no uh, way of anticipating and... Okay. Um, you know, I mean, it might have been something you could have anticipated. I'm not sure, but I'm I'm just making it up. I'm being devil's advocate a little bit here. Yeah, no, 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 no. I get that. Well, yeah. I think then we have to be flexible. We have to, mm. you know, we have to to go with the flow. If that's how it is, then that's how it is. I mean, you know, I had a cancellation at the last minute from yes, yeah. which has kind of thrown me out of it. You know, because yeah. I planned for. And then I think, OK, well, I can either let that upset me or I can say, well, actually, um, it means that I can give more attention to the people who are there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So yeah, I've kind true. of turned it around. And um, I feel that if we can do that with mostly everything, because, you know, let's face it, things go apparently wrong. Wrong. <laughs> exactly whatever that is you know yeah. definition of you know every day you know things happen unexpectedly thank goodness because it keeps us alive well know? i was going to say you know this is all part of using creativity isn't it it's problem solving and it's um figuring your mm. way around something that you never thought might happen or that you know gets mm. in your way of being able to do something and how can you find a solution and make it happen or take advantage of it in some, you know, some other way? I mean, it's it's interesting, you know, a lot of um, science now is is a result of 
unexpected happenings that were, you know, that led to something else, which led to something else, you know, um, and inventions were, you know, accidental, happy accidents that came up and people well, realized. In, 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 absolutely. And I think those unexpected yeah. things are wonderful because some of them, okay, can tend to be negative, apparently. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but some of them can, can be phenomenally positive that you can just, you know, you can go off, find something that's gone apparently not how you wanted it to go, but it's opened up another door to a whole Absolutely. load of other things. And so therefore, you know, to keep, to have the plan, I think helps to structure our thinking and our, on our direction. But within that, then to be open to the possibilities of anything happening. Yes, it's and, all about your mindset, isn't it? Having a no, and, um, and, and totally, totally, yeah. and that, you know what, what what you're saying about the, the the neuroscience of it. You know, if we're open to the create our creative side, the possibility, mm. the universe giving us whatever it is <laughs> yes, that we're yes. drawing into ourselves, then you know the whole thing kind of comes together. But it does start with a mindset. Absolutely. Of, um, not restricting ourselves to, you know, anything could happen <laughs> between yeah, one day and yeah. another day. You can't plan it to, you know, you can plan it um, to th what you can do, like I've been really talking good. about. Yeah. You know, you can be logical and s sort it out and have a direction, but then be open to things happening that... Um, you hadn't expected to happen and what what that might offer you you know yes 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 definitely yeah i mean one of the things that you know when we were talking about discussing challenges today um i realized for myself that one of my biggest challenges and not just in art but in other projects that i've taken on um is mm. just finishing it is just getting you know getting it completed because I think at some point I get a little bit bored, maybe. I get a little bit like, oh, you know, I don't know. I don't know what to do anymore. I'm not inspired. I'm not motivated. You know, I've been doing this forever now and I've had enough of it. And I'm, you know, mm. I don't want to look at it anymore. <laughs> I don't want to start something new. <laughs> well, I think, and I I think, think it's, that it, that's fine. And, and yeah. I, I think then yeah, you put it away for a bit. And then you might bring it out three months later or six months later or next yes. week and feel completely different about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or you, 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 it's run its course and it's on to the next, you know, what, what can you take from that to go to the next thing? Right. Yeah. Well, actually, the other night I, I had a fun evening. I decided to just take all the little bits and pieces of things that I had started and I just uh, put out some black paint on my palette and I just went through each one of those and I just touched up here and there just using the block, you know, just to kind of make a yeah. contrast. And it was so much fun, actually, um, because I wasn't trying to yeah, complete right. anything. I was just adding little things, you know, just to sort of yeah. keep it going. Um, and it felt very satisfying because all I had to do was use one color <laughs> or one lack, you know, <laughs> lack of color. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I, I think the other thing about um, challenges is, you know, what's our motivation? Mm. I mean, you know, if you look at people, say, who decide to run the marathon and their motivation is to raise money for a charity that they feel connected to or passionate about, whatever. You know, the, the, I'm, I'm sure without a shadow of a doubt that they have days when they think, why the hell am I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, when every bone in their body is hurting and all their muscles are hurting and, you know, um, they've got to, to, to really kind of hold it together. So the end goal, yes. like we were saying, you know, yes. I'm, I'm doing this to raise money for that, that motivation kind of keeps us, happening keeps us yeah. on track yes, with, with yeah. any challenge and then that was like me with doing my courses mm. you know everything had stopped my income had come to a complete standstill you know I couldn't yeah. teach 
as I was doing. I couldn't have my exhibitions. I'd got four exhibitions planned and everything just came to a, a standstill. Yeah. So, um, you know, I was forced to, into a corner. What am I going to do? <laughs> Um, and that is a motivating factor. So you can look at it from, you know, different different ways of being motivated. True. You know, what would you like with your painting? Well, I would like to put a series, for example, I'd like to put a series of paintings together and have a small show. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever it might be. And it mm -hmm. might be that you have to do 100 paintings in order to get, you know, 10 that you're happy with. And that's fine. There's no problem with that, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, you're right. I think it's important to have an end. Um, I mean, obviously, there's a, there's a satisfaction in just doing something for its own sake, which we've talked yeah. about before. But there's also that sen sense of accomplishment of actually accomplishment. finishing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I think we need both. I, I'm a great um, fan of uh, uh, Jordan Peterson, as you mm. probably know. And I was listening to him this morning on 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 a subject, and you know, to to go back constantly to to basics is um, be the best you can be. Mm. Basically you know, move yourself forward, make today more than yesterday, be better at something today than you were yesterday. Because the sense of achievement that you get is such yes. a feel good factor. It does. And when you feel good, you have a different energy, you have a different aura, you have a different effect on people. Mm -hmm. you know, people are it's contagious that energy that you have when you're feeling you're feeling good the knock-on effect to other people you know you know your nearest and dearest or the people that you're working with or the whatever your family it, it's kind of compounds positively and well i, I mean it's, yeah, yeah it can be very does. inspiring yeah to yeah. see someone do something and accomplish something with yeah. Um, a whole lot less than what we have available to us. You know, we were talking about this another time, I think, where, mm -hmm. you know, there was this woman who had um, basically, I think she, in an accident, had lost both of her legs or something. And she had been a downhill, um, you know, snowboarder, um, an Olympic, or she was training for the Olympics and she had this mm -hmm. horrible accident and then lost both of her legs. But mm -hmm. she got artificial legs put on and boy oh boy she went for it and i think she ended up in the paralympics and she won a gold medal or something so imagine yeah yeah now that's a challenge um, yeah, I think, yeah absolutely uh, you know obviously though there, there's a fantastic you know achievements and stories you know sometimes however i think i think it's difficult to relate to in our without sounding negative and not our ordinary lives yes yes <laughs> you yes, know as, yeah. as kind of just Norm, normal people <laughs> nor, normal people doing normal things yeah but we can make that normal extraordinary <laughs> and um i feel that that is that is a mindset what can we do today that will make us feel good that will yeah. enhance our life that that will give us a feel good factor that maybe we could do something for somebody that would make us feel good. Exactly. You know, yeah. yeah. And, and that's so important. I find, you know, I, I, I think that it's the key to, to happiness in a way is yeah. to feel that you've contributed and you've helped somebody, you know, even if it's in a tiny little way, you know, holding the door open for them at the store or <laughs> whatever it might be, um, because it does have a knock on effect, as you say, mm -hmm. you know, you've, you've sure. given that person some sort of sense of, oh, well, that was nice. You know, I wasn't expecting yeah. that. And well, it's recognition, it. isn't it? You yeah. know, people like to be recognized because we all walk around in invisible. You mm. know, we're in the supermarket, everyone's invisible. You know, you don't, you might be standing next to somebody in a queue and they've got their life and their challenges and their problems and, 
you know, you don't know. Um, no. But I think to be recognized as, you know, as a human being, yeah. <laughs> whatever, wherever we are, everybody kind of responds to that without, yes. without question. Yes. And um, that if we are doing that to them, it makes them feel better. So we get the reward of feeling better too that makes us feel good i mean you know often at the supermarket if i've got a whole basket full of stuff and somebody behind me has just got you know a loaf of bread and six mm. eggs or something, you know i'll always say you know go in front yeah, of course because i'm going to be aided and and you know the surprise <laughs> is really nice yeah. Sometimes if I've only got the loaf of bread and the six eggs and someone's in front of me with a basket, you know, full to the brim and they don't ask, well, number one, it might piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> but number two, then I might actually say, excuse me, do you mind if I go in front of you? You know, that would be very kind. And yeah. then they, they kind of wake up because... Then they yeah, haven't they're even in thought a... about it. They haven't even given it a second thought. So there's also a feel-good factor for them then to allow you to do something that's going to help you. It, you know, not very often do they say no. No, usually, <laughs> hopefully. Usually, yeah. occasionally yeah. you'll get that person, but most of the time. Um, so, you know, going back to challenges, if we then said you know what are our basic challenges every day you know what what are, what are we working on mm. so it could be a number of things it could be the challenge of getting up at a certain time in the morning yeah you know, we want we want to kind of have a new discipline that we're going to get up at seven instead of eight right why what's our reason <laughs> well um, for me here, because I can work in the morning because it's so much cooler. Right. Once it gets to midday, it's really hot and debilitating. So if I give myself that extra hour in the morning, I'm going to get more done. More, yes, be yeah. more productive. So that's, that, that's motivated me. Then that's the challenge. The next challenge is, you know, I, I want to try and lose some weight. So I'm going to have this for breakfast rather than that for breakfast. Okay. <laughs> Even though you'd rather have that. <laughs> I'd much rather have that. Um, yeah. But, you know, all those things are kind of little challenges that mm. e if, even if we succeeded at one of them, you know, if I manage to get up at seven instead of eight, I can feel good about that. If I yes, have a piece of toast for breakfast instead of an apple. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well... Never mind, tomorrow I'll have an apple. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think that to congratulate ourselves on our on our achievements, and yeah. however small or large, and with our painting, well, um, I don't, I kind of don't see the painting in the same way in a challenge because I enjoy it so much. Mm. The, the challenge might be to um, finish a painting, to right. be courageous and dive in and finish, and um, or to start a painting, you know, mm. because starting is always, where do I start? <laughs> um, and improving, constantly looking at how I can improve my skills of painting and how I do how do I do that so you know looking at other artists looking at books reading stuff uh, I've been watching um, the sky arts um, competition uh, portrait artist of the year and oh. it's on YouTube and they're wonderful to watch and yes. you have all these different people interpreting you know how they're painting the person the model and and it's wonderful to watch and it's very inspiring so all those things give me inspiration and energy and enthusiasm so um yeah i mean i have a challenge i've got co uh, an exhibition in october and i've mm -hmm. got to finish five paintings so 
how am I going to do that? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Um, Again, well, one um, one little chunk at a time, I suppose. Yeah, one bit yeah. at a time, one painting yeah. at a time. So, um, but it's interesting to see how how you how you think about challenges. Do you think about them as a challenge, or do you think about them as things you have to do? You know, well, I mean, it's a mix, <laughs> isn't it? Sometimes, yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes it's things that are very mundane and not very mm. interesting, but you have to do them anyway, and you just don't feel like it. You know, whatever that might be. You know, mm. um, and and getting them done is a you do get a sense of accomplishment because at least uh, you know. I took care of it and it's it's finished it's over yeah, um yeah then there are other challenges where like in for my i find sometimes i don't know what to do if i'm doing something a painting or whatever and i feel stuck mm. you know and i'm mm. really not sure where to go from that from that point you know going back to what i was saying mm. earlier that's when i tend to push it aside and i just kind of walk away from it mm. and yeah, I mean, you're right. You know, I would have been, at some point maybe go back to it. If I revisit it later and I look at it a slightly different way, I might get a different idea. Or in the interim, I might have seen something that, you know, got me thinking about it differently or, or given me a different mm -hmm. um, idea to pursue. Um, I know. And I think, you know, YouTube, um, for all its wonderful um you know, ability to inspire us and give us amazing instruction and content, you know, the downside to it is in a way is that there's just so much out there that you can easily go, you know, in 10 different, 100 different directions. And so, oh, that's really cool. I'd like to try that. Oh, what about that thing over there? You know, and so yeah. my mind is very often um, overwhelmed with different ideas and different possibilities. And I and I feel a little bit like I'm paralyzed by it. So sometimes I think, okay, I'm just going to do this and I'm going to focus on that and get mm. that, you know, dive into that one and forget all the other things for a moment because, yeah, I mean, you know, it's too much. Oh, t totally. And yeah. I, I think, you know, I've talk, talked about this a few times um, about, you know, hopping, YouTube mm. hopping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, the temptation is very great to do that. You know, people might hop off this podcast onto another one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, well, that, that's how we are. That's how it is. But I think that yeah. it, it, the, the discipline of that, for example, for me, for example, I'm, I'm doing quite a lot of stuff with some jelly plate at the moment, oh, and I haven't yeah, right. done anything for a while. So I just restrict my watching to people who are doing different things with jelly plates. Mm. So, and and then you know, you find a couple of people that you you like you can watch and that, yeah. that you have a, a, a nice resonance with some people's voice. I can't stand, so I'm not going <laughs> to listen to that. Some people are really <laughs> like, and I'm going to listen to that, you know? So you, we, we go with, with how we feel, but I think, you know, if there's a specific subject that you want to explore, then just stay with that subject until you've exhausted it. Yes, and then, yes. you know, work on that. But mm -hmm. I also think this is a good thing about, so you find a subject that you really like, and then you might find a course that that person on YouTube is doing, maybe me, maybe somebody yeah. else. Yeah and, yeah. and then you do the course to see if that's what you would really love to do. And then, okay, we'll do this one and then we'll do something else and we'll do something. So we're building up our our skills and our interests and you know techniques and finding what we love to do well so, that is a wonderful opportunity to do that self um exploration and to do that yeah. and, and developing an understanding of what what resonates with you you know maybe you do mm. tend to like doing the jelly plates and the collage like i'm finding that i, I i'm more drawn to doing collage now than I, you know, mm. than painting in a way, because um, it's interesting because it, it was from a comment that Chris made at our last podcast when he said mm. to me, oh, I think you're a kinesthetic person. You like to do things with your hands. You like to feel and touch yeah, yeah, things. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I yeah. went, yeah, you know what? You're absolutely right. And everything that I've done sort of in a creative way has been mostly with very tactile things, you know, crochet. Yeah, like things. you're knitting and you're crocheting and you're pottery. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah pottery, yeah. Uh, macrame, it's all very, you know, touchy-feely things, whereas painting is not so much. Um, but collage is somewhere in the middle, you know, it's middle. painting, yeah. but it's also yeah. manipulating paper. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. yeah, yeah. And actually, uh, watching that Artist of the Year uh, last night, there was one um, one of the artists that was that had been chosen to do this the portrait. Um, she did it all in collage, oh, okay. and it was fantastic. I mean, yeah. how she did the hair and the and the the face and the eyes, and she just had a couple of magazines, and she was just tearing bits out out of the magazine, and she put this. I mean, she had such a likeness to the to wow. the model, mm. and. I was thinking, you know, I hadn't, I hadn't thought about doing a portrait in collage. <laughs> I mean, I've been doing collage some stuff. In fact, I was doing a bit this morning. Um, but that was fascinating. And I thought, yes. wow, you know, that's really worth exploring. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. To talk, yeah. To do. Um, so, yeah, you should pursue that, <laughs> Eve. See where it takes you. See what you well, love Well, I, I think, you know, it, it, it helps because now I have a better understanding of myself and what makes yeah. me, you know, what entire inspires me, what makes me want to continue and, and so on. And I think mm -hmm. that that's important to recognize in oneself, you know, so that you don't, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it, it's good to go and try and do something that challenges you, which, you know, may not be your natural tendency, you know, to kind of push well, yourself but, a little bit. Well, absolutely. But, you know, remember what you said, you, that, oh, well, you know, collage, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it wasn't until you actually did it, you started, <laughs> yes. it, you realised, wow, I really love this. That's right. So you just never know. And that's one of the things that I feel really passionate about with, with my teaching is to really encourage people to try these different things because you never know what wh where it will take you how you will yeah, find yeah. It. you know on the surface you might think oh no I can't do that yeah, and then yeah you do it and you think ah wow this is fantastic so explore all those but I mean you've come to this because you've yeah. explored that possibility true yes it's a little bit like when you've got a child who refuses to try new vegetables you know and you're like, just just one spoon, just try one spoon. Mm -hmm. If you don't like it, it won't make you eat it, but you might like it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think um I think it's an interesting way to to think about our day and our weeks and our mm. life. And one of the things that that helps me. Um, especially if I'm on the low energy time, is to have just three tasks a day mm. to fulfill. Yeah. If I can do more than that, that's great. But if I can do three, then I've achieved. That makes me feel good. Because I feel good, I can probably do another one and maybe another right. one. Yes, so yes. Uh, the challenge is then... <laughs> to set yourself up so you would discipline yourself to do three. And I think discipline is part and parcel of it, actually. Mm, true. You know, you. I don't think you can achieve anything without discipline. It, what? What can you achieve? <laughs> you know, you have to kind of apply yourself. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, discipline comes from motivation, comes from desire to... Yeah to move ahead, to move forward, to complete, yeah. you know, and to see the end result. Yeah, exactly. So, you yeah. know, going back to the challenge, going back, say, talking about the person who wants to run a marathon because their motivation is to raise money for blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So the discipline of them training to fulfill their challenge, <laughs> well, that is like with anything, you know, the discipline for painting is to try and do something, you know, every day if possible, even if mm. it's for 10 minutes or five minutes, do something with whatever it is that we might be doing. 
yeah. mindset yeah. discipline. <laughs> I'm going to discipline myself to meditate for five minutes every day or to exercise or to whatever <laughs> yeah. it is. Yeah. So I think it's I, also uh, doing that forward visioning, you know, that visioning into the future of mm -hmm. when I accomplish this, whatever it is, you know, how is it going to make me feel? How, you know, envision and, and put yourself into that mind of, or that yeah. feeling of that point in time in the future when you've actually Absolutely. done it. And yeah. then, you know, you get this feeling of like, oh, wow, that's great. I really love doing that. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And that really, you know, kind of reinforces you to start and to continue because you're moving towards that feeling that, that, you know, that end point where you know you're going to have that feeling and that reward at the end of it. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. For, for sure. And I think that, that maybe um, when we're faced with difficult situations, you know, we've been trained out of using the word problem mm. to exchange that for challenge. So we find yeah. ourselves in a difficult position with whatever you know maybe health maybe financial maybe in relationships or whatever um then again it's worth kind of taking a step back to say well what can i do to change this this issue this problem and again you kind of have to 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 break it down and have a bit of a plan <laughs> so yeah. if i'm in a financial diffi financial difficult position what can i actually do mm. to change that you know what am i what am i able to do you know immediately to be able to change that so that that kind of mindset of trying to organize your thoughts about it Mm. however big the issues might be is helpful and start with three things <laughs> it's simple to do yeah you know? three is quite quite achievable i think actually you know it's not yeah yeah, yeah. I with think whatever mountain of, of challenges that you might be facing even health wise you know how can i make myself feel better if i've got this well okay one of them might be to do some positive aff affirmations for five minutes mm -hmm. every day listen to something that's going to make me feel good you know when i've gone through my various health issues I tell you what, I think how oh God, I don't know how long ago. It's a long time ago. My saviour at that time was listening to Louise Hay. You oh, can yes. be in life. And we didn't eat it was so long ago. We didn't have CDs, we had cassettes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it tells you how long ago it was. Any case, I remember night after night after night, I would go to, to go to sleep with with Louise Hay. In your head, okay, yeah. <laughs> and it changed my life. I reprogrammed. I was in a terrible situation at that time. I'd run out of yes. money, I got divorced. There was a whole load of, you know, really bad things going on, apparently. But it, it that, that whole thing changed everything. My life has never been the same since. And... So there was a huge amount of positivity that came out of that. So, yes, I, I had a similar situation. I mean, I was in a relationship with someone who was, you know, quite abusive. And, um, you know, when it got to the point where I realized that I just couldn't continue being with this person, but there was no way to get away from him. Sorry, there's a fly that's bothering me. That's why my hands are flailing. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I discovered, um, I discovered Ram Das, um, you know, who's a spiritual yeah. teacher. Um, mm -hmm. and just by listening to him, you know, uh, listening to recordings of his, of his talks and, and so on, it brought me completely out of that mindset that I was in of kind of being a victim in a way, you know, like poor me, you know, how can I, how can I get myself out of this? Um, and you know, it wasn't like a light went off or I had an immediate solution to it, but it just changed my my mindset and it just gave me a whole different way of looking at things and looking at myself as well. Yeah. Um, and 
suddenly, well, not suddenly, but gradually, you know, it just changed. The whole scenario changed and, and I, you know, he left and then I was able to start my life over again. And it, I kind of, in a way, bless my ex-partner for, you know, for pushing me into that direction where I was, I was kind of forced in a way to, to shift my thinking um, because Absolutely. maybe I wouldn't have otherwise. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. You know so, I mean? so yeah. it, you know, this, this is the wonderful thing I think about life is that you, you know, our apparent difficulties can actually give us a fun, an amazing life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because it yeah. forces us to look at things in a different way. It changes That's our right. perspective. You know, if we, if we're willing to open ourselves up to the possibilities and get out of victim mode, and right. get into fighting mode, you know, strong mode, let's see what we can do with this positive mode, <laughs> then um, really things can happen M miraculously. And, and, you know, both you and I have had, I've had miraculous things happen. That who would have thought that on that particular day this would have happened? Mm -hmm. It does if we actually allow it. I'm waiting for the next one to happen, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, um, yeah. I think, you know, that's another subject about being a victim or thinking you're a victim because I think so many people tend to put themselves in that position and hopelessness. Yes. And what yeah. can they do? But I feel that the most important thing with any of this is how we think about it and i think thinking about how we think about it can make all the difference in the world it starts with our thinking how mm. are we thinking and you know set ourselves a challenge of being aware of what we're thinking at any given time Exactly, exactly. Um, Being aware yes. of your own thinking is yeah. important. Yeah. Um, I, I think, you know, if, if there was anything I could do, if I had a magic wand and I could wave it around in front of people's faces and just say, just be conscious of what you're thinking and what you're saying about yourself, you know, about how you see the world and about how you see yourself and stop and, you know, it's like putting a mirror up in front of you and, and realizing that, you um, you're 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 creating your own reality and by by talking or thinking of yourself in limiting ways right well i think i think the first person it has to start with is oneself well of course you know, of course I think, yeah and i do feel that it, it when when one starts doing that on the occasions i feel when i've got interaction with people and and close friends they can notice a difference if suddenly mm. you, you if you are becoming more aware of how you think and how you feel um and you stop yourself from going down the negative route and life changes actually also friends change true yes <laughs> um, true. the whole thing can change because you might decide that you want to spend your life in a in a different group of people who are um, affirming who you are and are on on that wavelength with you to yeah um, to self awareness because there are a lot of a lot of people who don't want to even think about thinking about it. <laughs> it's, it's, that's you how know, it is. Yeah, I mean, you know, you you live on your own and I do as well. Um, but I think for a lot of people who are in either relationships or family situations where there are a lot of, there's a lot of negativity in the air, you know, just overall mm -hmm. in general, I think it's even more challenging because you've got to be even more mindful of not getting, you know, dragged into that rabbit hole of, of, mm -hmm. you know, vic victimization or feeling victimized or feeling, um, that you're, you know, you can't, and you, you know, you're not able to, you're not worthy, you know, all these negative um, self thoughts and thing, you know, messages that you're probably being told, perhaps even just, you know, straight out verbally, uh, yeah. which is very abusive. And how do you, yeah. you know, how do you manage that? Um, I, I, mm -hmm. I really feel such compassion for people who are in, you know, relationships, and they feel like they can't get out, you know, for whatever reason, you know, 
Um, but they're in a very toxic relationship. And mm. yeah. Well, it's, it's another very big subject. And I think, you know, <laughs> being the age that I am, being the age that you are, you know, we've been through that. I've been through that, you know, a few times. Yes. And yes. my decision at the time was to break out of it. Some people can't break out of it. Exactly. And, um, yeah, I feel very sad for them about that. Mm. But mm -hmm. at the same time, um, if one takes just a breath, there was one particular situation where I really thought that I couldn't get away. And I was actually living in a, an, another country at the same time with my son at the time, who was, I think, I don't know, eight or nine. We were stranded, basically. Oh, and um, I thought, I can't, but I really can't do this. And we literally, in the middle of the night, packed back. I got prepared, got him prepared. Wow. I put him, put him to bed, but left his clothes on and said to him, right, we're, we're going on an adventure later. <laughs> and wow. I, had to wait. <laughs> I had to wait till the middle of the night. And literally, I got him up and we went. And we ran across fields to the nearest oh house. It really? was really, really frightening. Sounds like something out of a movie. Yeah, it was. It really was. It was actually in Hong Kong, in 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 the territories. It was frightening. But I thought, I if I stay here, I'm something really bad is going to happen, and I wasn't going to let that happen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good and for you. So Bless you. I managed to get to this house, and I knew that there were. Um, I, they weren't English, they were Australian, that, that this Australian couple were living there. I just banged on the door. I don't know, it was about two o'clock in the morning or whatever. <sighs> Worked them up, what the hell's going on? I said, please, could we stay here? We're in a we're in a very dangerous situation. And they okay. kind of looked at me and my son and this bag. And they were like, open the door. Yeah, you know, do you want a coffee? Do you want a cup of tea? Do you want a whiskey? <laughs> <laughs> all of the above <laughs> and they were fantastic and then in the oh. morning we managed to you know phone the various authorities and do this and that and the other and I escaped literally escaped yes, so, yes but yes. it was very very frightening but I had made a decision I can't if I stay there I'm going to be and and my son the same yeah. thing wasn't just you it was your son yeah, yeah. it was him and i yeah. didn't know what was going to happen i didn't know what i would do but i knew i couldn't be there and somehow you know if i made that decision something would happen that would be would work out you know i had to just yeah. be brave because yeah. i was yeah. uh, um you know in a very vulnerable situation so having had that experience um uh, albeit you know a long long time ago now um I've kind of had both things. I've had the victim and the victim as I victimization. And then I've had the part where I've had to go and, you know, sort myself out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was very ch challenging to begin with, but I think if you make that decision and it's the right decision, literally without sounding woo woo, the universe comes in and helps you. You know, that yes. wonderful saying, who helps them, who helps themselves. That's right. I, That's right. Uh, you know, although I'm not a, you know, big Bible basher or anything like that, I do believe that. I really do, that if you yeah. stand up for yourself, despite the challenges, and do something, the universe comes in with something to, to offer you. And you hear right. so many stories of that kind of thing. It's happening. true. It's true, yeah. yeah. And it also gives you that sense of, um, that inner strength that maybe you didn't know that you had or you didn't recognize. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. And I do think that when you're in those really difficult, I mean, I'm, I don't know, I haven't been in a, a, a war zone situation, but you hear mm. all these amazing stories that, you know, that adrenaline kicks in and you yeah. can do the most extraordinary things that you wouldn't, you know, for survival that you would have never thought possible. <laughs> so yeah i think you have to have kind of faith in that really so i think we don't give ourselves enough credit a lot of time right. you know for how strong we are and how you know 
a lot of people these days are now talking about um, the importance of being resilient and the importance of having grit, you know, that sense of, yeah. I'm not going to let this get me down. I can make my way through this problem. I can survive. Mm -hmm. I can make it work, you know, and not, not letting yourself be, you know, suppressed and pushed around and, mm -hmm. You know, as you say, you know, fighting back in a, in a certain way, fighting for yourself, fighting for your integrity, fighting for your safety, um, and fighting for your happiness and your 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 peace of mind and and having you know your right, your 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 God given right, if you like to to be a happy person. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and then going back to painting, which is, <laughs> oh, yes, we've kind of gone into a whole different direction here. <laughs> Yeah. Kind of five in the middle of a Hong Kong field. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, you know, set yourself a nice little goal of the week of doing X amount with your painting yeah. and achieve it. Do that, that three things a day, I think, is a really helpful, um, a helpful focus point. You know, yes. just wherever you're up to, however good or bad you might be feeling, set yourself those tasks of three things that you could do three things that you could do with your painting or mm -hmm. your sculpture or your knitting or your whatever it is that you might be yeah. doing yeah. and and i think then that that builds you up and builds you up so the next day you could do four things and the next week exactly. you could do five things and then That's you're right. on you get that you know, you get that wheel and that motivation going and suddenly you're doing 10 things a day, which are fantastic. And, <laughs> um, yeah. You never know what you can achieve. And I don't think it matters what age you are. You no. know, I'm still doing this at my age, which is really terrifying. But anyway. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> um, well, I hope I'm I mean, still doing it when I'm 80, you know. Yeah, and beyond. Yeah, and beyond. and beyond. I mean, it's exactly, you know, I'm working with someone as a coach now, and um, she's she's got what you might call writer's block. You know, she's written, she used to write all the time, and then all of a sudden something happened and she just couldn't write anymore. Um, and so without trying to kind of psychoanalyze it or, I mean, yes, there is a certain amount of, you know, uh, self-questioning that has to happen as to why it happened but the exercise that I've been working with her is just write anything for five minutes a day put the timer yeah. on the desk you know set the timer for mm -hmm. five minutes and if you can do five minutes then good you're great you don't have to worry you yeah. know you, you you've gotten yeah. past that block yeah and so you know she's been doing five minutes or seven minutes or ten minutes or whatever you know so it's just mm -hmm breaking that, breaking down that, that resistance and that, you know, that mental block of, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, I thought I, I would say the same thing with anything with painting or with doing whatever, you know, start, just start it and then be pleased with what you've done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then do a little bit more. And, and yeah. one of, you know, Jordan Peterson's, greatest thing i think which i have every day in in my uh, in my mind is when you get up make your bed <laughs> make step your one. bed yeah. yeah step one make your bed because yeah. you're ready then you know if you just leave it in a mess your mind is in a mess mm. if you make your bed you're ready <laughs> yeah and yeah. um i mean i've i've always done you know, more or less always made my bed in the morning anyway, but it's just the, the connection between that and being ready. Yes, it sets the you stage know. for your mind it sets, to, it sets to be. your mind. Yeah. And then one of the other things that I heard, which I love, is um, dress as if you're going to meet, well, I know it's the king now, dress as if you're going to meet the queen today. Oh. <laughs> in other oh, words kind of, i don't know about that <laughs> you know, well i don't know about that but it's actually be prepared yeah, make yourself yeah. feel good you know mm. I, and mm. sometimes you know i just don't want to do that i want, don't want to have any makeup on or you know just mess around in old in old clothes yeah. and whatever and yeah that's relaxing time but actually when it comes to doing stuff i want to feel 
right so even you know doing all the videos i do and obviously the podcast you know you've got to get out you've got to do your hair do your face get ready and yeah. it makes you feel good to be doing yes. that to yes, actually yes. have the reason to do it and some days that's a challenge <laughs> Yeah, because I don't yeah. feel like doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, get ready, and um, I, I think the three tasks a day. If anyone was to take away something from here, and they're going through challenges, aim for doing three things on your list a day. Right, great. But great it would idea. be great to hear your comments. Uh, you know how you how how you uh, deal with, you know, the different challenges that you have. It would be. Um, great to uh, hear all about those and we've got all our information below you've got now your everything up and running with your website and yeah 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 everything is up and running and soon I'm going to have my own YouTube channel once I once I get um, the YouTube studio to finish doing what it does with videos it takes forever but anyway okay. yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> and um so we'll meet again next week, which is fantastic. Yes. And wow, um, thank you, everybody, for, for listening. And we'd really enjoy your comments. And please like if you enjoyed this and subscribe because it really helps with our uh, algorithm with YouTube and to reach as many people as possible to hopefully inspire them too. So that's yes. fantastic. <laughs> and thank you, Eve, for a great conversation this morning. Oh, well, this thank you too, Joy. Minute. Uh, DNM it was this morning. <laughs> it's kind of nice to get our teeth on the bones, really. You know, I think that it helps. It helps to clarify stuff and makes us feel as if we're not alone with our, our different challenges that we have because we all have the challenges. Yeah, I know, I know, yeah. and that's the most important thing is to also feel like. There are others, you know, uh, that experience and are and are struggling with the same thing. So, yeah. you know, reaching out and, and asking for help is also very important. And I think that, Absolutely. you know, in terms of what yeah. I do, um, sometimes it doesn't have to be a big thing. You know, sometimes it can be just something that you're not really quite sure how to move, you know, move out of a situation or move, deal with a problem. And just having somebody yeah. sit with you and talk to you about it is enormously helpful. Exactly. Yeah, 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 for sure. So you're the go-to. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, well, thanks very much, Joy, and uh, we'll right. talk to you again soon. Yeah, have a good week. Okay. And thank you, everybody. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.